Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Garland, on October 4th, you issued an unprecedented memo that involves the Department of Justice and the FBI and local school districts, local school boards, nothing like it in our country's history. It was based, you've testified, on this letter from the National School Board Association that we now know the White House was involved in writing. They've retracted the letter. They've apologized for the letter. They say they regret the letter, but you won't retract the memo and said earlier that you have no regrets. And you've defended yourself repeatedly today before this committee by saying, well, you're focused on violence. But now, of course, we've seen the memo from your own Justice Department advising state and local and other prosecutors about all of the different federal causes of action that they can bring against parents that are not about violence, they're about harassment and intimidation. I'm looking here at this memo. It identifies no fewer than 13 possible federal crimes involving harassment and intimidation, including making annoying phone calls. Do you think a parent who makes a phone call to a school board member that she has elected, that that school board member deems annoying should be prosecuted, General Garland? No, I don't. And the Supreme Court has made quite clear that the word intimidation with respect to the constitutional protection is one that directs a threat to a person with the intent of placing the victim in fear of bodily harm or death. Prosecutors who investigate these cases know the Supreme Court. This is a, a, a very famous uh, leading case. Pro prosecutors do, but, but parents don't, General Garland. Do you, do you think that a parent who looks at the 13 different federal crimes that your Justice Department has identified they might be subject to and prosecuted for, like making annoying phone calls, do you think that they're going to feel that they're welcome to speak up at a school board meeting? How about this one? They could be prosecuted for using the internet, I guess that would be Facebook, in a way that might cause emotional distress to a victim. Is that a, is that a crime of violence? Senator, I haven't seen the memo that you're Why talking haven't about. Why haven't you? And I don't, I, and I, I, even from the description, it doesn't sound like it was addressed to parents. But if you- No, it, was, it wasn't addressed to parents, it was addressed right. to prosecutors. That's the problem. Why haven't you seen the memo? I, uh, I, I don't know why I haven't. I don't look at every. I have. I do not get every memo that every U.S. attorney uh, sends out. But uh, if you're wait, wait, wait a minute. Don't, don't. I, I, don't, I just want to be sure I understand this. This, this is a memorandum that collects 13 different federal crimes parents could be charged with. It has United States Department of Justice on the top of it, and you're telling me you haven't seen it. Who's the memo from, Senator? The United States Department of Justice, United States Attorney for the District of Montana. I have not seen a memo from the District of Montana. I not high enough priority for you? It's not, that's not the question. I don't... It is I, the question. Answer my question. Is it not a high enough priority for you when you're threatening parents with 13 different federal crimes? I These aren't seen. crimes of violence. You've testified today. You're focused on violence. That's not what your U.S. attorneys... They work for you. That's not what they're saying. You haven't seen it because it's not a high enough priority, or what? Question of priority. No one has sent me that memo, so I haven't seen it. What I do you mean no one has sent you the memo? You run the United States Department of Justice, do you not? There are 115,000 employees of the Department of Justice. Indeed, and you are in charge of every one of them. And, and this was a sufficiently important case that you issued a memo. You, over your signature, issued a memo involving the FBI and the Department of Justice in local school boards, local school districts. Your U.S. attorneys are now threatening prosecution with 13 different crimes, but it's not a high enough priority for you. It got lost in the mix. I'll send again. I've never seen that memo. It wasn't That's what concerns me. me, General Garland. Well, it wasn't sent to me. I hope you will assure your constituents that what we are concerned about here is violence and threats of violence. That only leads That's me to conclude, way. General That's Garland, all I can conclude from this is either that you're not in control of your own department or that more likely what I think to be the case is that you knew full well that this is exactly the kind of thing that would happen. When you issued your memo, when you involved the Department of Justice and all of its resources, and the FBI and all of its resources in local school boards and local school districts, you knew that federal prosecutors would start collecting crimes that they could use against parents. You knew they would advise state and local officials that these are all of the ways parents might be prosecuted. You knew that that was the likely outcome, and that's exactly what's happened. And we're talking about parents like Scott Smith, who's behind me over my shoulder. This is a father from 
Loudoun County, Virginia. Here he is at a school board meeting. He was forcibly restrained. He was assaulted. He was arrested. Why? Because he went to an elected school board meeting. He's a voter, by the way. He went to an elected school board meeting to raise the fact that his daughter was assaulted, sexually assaulted, in a girl's restroom by a boy. This is what happened to him. Now, you testified last week before the House that you didn't know anything about this case. I find that extraordinary because the letter that you put so much weight on, the letter that's now been retracted, it cites this case. It cites Mr. Scott's case directly. There's a news article cited in the letter. It's discussed in the letter, but you testified you just couldn't remember it. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Do you think people like Scott Smith, do you think parents who show up to complain about their children being assaulted ought to be treated like this man right here? Parents who show up to complain about school boards are protected by the First Amendment. Do you think that they ought to be prosecuted they in the different protected. ways that your U.S. attorneys are identifying? If what they're doing is complaining about what the school board is doing, policies, curriculum, anything else that they want to, as long as they're not committing threats of violence, then they should not be prosecuted. And they can't be. Let me ask you about this. Several of my Democrat colleagues have today, just today in this hearing, multiple times have compared parents who show up at school board meetings, like Mr. Smith here, have compared them to criminal rioters. You think that's right? You think that a parent who shows up at a school board meeting, who has a complaint, who wants to voice that complaint, and maybe she doesn't use exactly the right grammar, you think they're akin to criminal rioters? Do you agree with that? I do not, and I do not remember any senator here compare, making that comparison. Oh, really? These people are just like the folks who came here on January 6th and in, in, in the riot at the Capitol? I don't think it was, they were referring to the picture that you're showing there. Well, I certainly would hope not, but they were referring to parents who go to school board meetings. Mr. Smith is a parent who went to a school board meeting. I'll leave it at this, General Garland. You have weaponized the FBI and the Department of Justice. Your U.S. attorneys are now collecting and cataloging all the ways that they might prosecute parents like Mr. Smith because they want to be involved in their children's education and they want to have a say in their elected officials. It's wrong. It is unprecedented, to my knowledge, in the history of this country. And I call on you to resign. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.